So Dale, when I first started hanging out with you in about 94, I don't remember when we made our first trip to Venice, but it was in that year. And certainly the next year we went to Venice about five times in 95, getting ready for the 96 Chihuly over Venice in the fall. And I will never forget you telling me about the importance of the secrets and how in the 15th century, if you made it off the island of Murano and you made it to England, you'd be crowned. But if you made it off the island of Murano and you were caught, you'd be beheaded. That, that whole concept of secrecy has always stayed on the island of Murano. So one, if you went into one factory, like when I was there studying, I, I was at Vanini, the factory, but I never went to another factory because that was a no-no. If you went into one factory, you couldn't go into another factory. And to this day, there are a lot of secrets on Murano. And of course, when we started Pilchuck and we started bringing over great masters from Murano and other countries, uh, all those secrets came out. And it was extremely controversial. I mean, you were criticized anyone that you worked with, especially the masters you worked with, were criticized. There was this fear of these secrets getting out and what was going to happen if these secrets got out. So when you first started Pilchuck, this idea that you would bring teachers and students from all over the world, not just people who knew glass, but people who were into art, and they would bring ideas and then you would help them, support them in figuring out how to realize those ideas in the material. So tell us about the first summer and one of the first artists you ever invited. Well, one of the first artists was uh, Erwin Eich from Germany, uh, who had a factory. He was somewhat known in America because of Harvey Littleton brought him over to the University of Wisconsin. And I got to meet him. So I invited him to Pilchuk and he came. And then the Lubinskys came from Czechoslovakia. And then we had the great masters from Sweden, from England. And so all of these ideas came out. And yet your fundamental attitude, knowing what you knew, which was very little, you were just beginning in the material and you were so curious and you were also so generous and you always wanted to share your ideas with others and you wanted them to share theirs with you. So you could work with Lino Talia Pietra, he could bring his technique and ideas to your work and you could help him free up his, some of his technical expertise and become an artist in his own right. So what happens when you share secrets is you develop this, you know, kind of a freedom with the material where you're not burdened by the factory or burdened by the technique per se. But people came with their hands, with all of that knowledge in their hands, right? And brought it. And somebody like Italo, right? Your best buddy, wasn't a glass artist. He was a painter, but he could come and say, hey, let's, let's make this idea in glass. Well, it was a good time for experimentation so there were artists, really, a lot of really great artists that wanted to work with glass. And Pilchuck was the perfect place for them to come as artists in residence and learn. And so people like Maya Lin and Kiki Smith and fashion designers and people from all, all different parts of the art world could come and have this amazing space, right? Amazing team also at the ready to help them realize their, their work. With a beautiful little studio. Did you ever think it would go on for 50 years? No, I was surprised <laughs> it went on for more than one year. How but, much for the first summer? You always told me how much it cost the first summer. Well, I had a grant for $2,000 from the Union of Independent uh, Art Schools. And um, but John Hauberg came up to me at the end of the summer and said, let's take a walk. And he asked how much I owed the bank because he knew I had spent more than $2,000. So I told him that I owed the bank $7,000. And he asked how much would I need to do it for the next summer? And I said, I'd need $25,000. And he said, okay, he says, I'll pay the bank off 
and give you the $25,000. And he did that for 10 years. Where would artists be without great patrons like John and Annie Halbert? Wow. And people like Jack Lenore Larson who believed in you and introduced you to Halbergs, right? I mean, it's just yeah, a lot that, of lucky. Well, Halbergs right? not only gave us the money, they gave us the land. They, yeah. they signed over 40 acres to us. Isn't it incredible that we can look at Pilchuck today in its 50, 51st year and then you get to feel that sense of pride that to this day a young artist um, from anywhere in the world can come and work there. Yeah, there's, there's just something about, you know, being up there for three weeks with 50 other artists, you know, it's, it's not even very important what class you're taking. No. It's just being there. Every night there's a lecture, and there's critiques every day, and you really get to know a lot of people yeah. for, for the rest of your life.